you get me what's good everybody welcome back to my channel it's lario thank you for joining me and today i wanted to get into something really cool it's a debatable topic amongst fl studio users it's whether or not you should use the channel rack for your drums or the playlist for your drums i'm going to show you the difference between the two why you should use one versus the other in my opinion stick around to the end of the video and i also wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsors of this video distrokid let's get into a quick tutorial about them so real quick i wanted to tell you about the team section in distrokid in today's climate everyone is collaborating this is awesome so distrokid has a tool that allows you to easily pay your collaborators without having to hire an accountant with teams by distrokid you can add unlimited collaborators to any track. You can change the splits at any time. You can even add or remove collaborators at any time. You can go back in time and see the previous splits. For privacy, collaborators can only see what percentage they get. Your collaborators will need to make a DistroKid account, but they'll get 50% off, so it's only 10 bucks. Your release won't be delayed if your collaborator is slow to sign up. Instead, they'll just hold the money for them until they join. If the artist never joins, you can easily cancel their invite and reallocate their money elsewhere, or you can grab it yourself. As always, DistroKid never takes a cut. You and and your collaborators get 100% of the earnings in total. Now let's get back to the video. Welcome back, we're gonna get right into this. I already went ahead and pre-made a drum loop in the channel rack and in the playlist I used the same exact samples, the same exact drum pattern in both. I didn't do anything to the samples. They're not even sent to the mixer yet. As you can see, if we go to all here, nothing is being sent to the mixer. So these right here, the gray ones, are the ones that are in the channel rack. These ones that are in color right here are the ones that are being sent to the playlist in audio form. So first I'm gonna go to pattern mode. Let's listen to the pattern in the channel rack. Sounds good, right? But there's a difference. So let's listen to the same exact pattern with the same exact samples in song mode in the playlist. So it sounds way harder. It hits way harder. The kicks especially hit way harder. Everything sounds a lot louder. And I'm gonna show you why. When you make a drum pattern in the channel rack, let's go back over to the pattern. When you make a pattern in that, in that channel rack, for whatever reason, I don't know, FL Studio puts these velocities at 80%. You can see up in the top right up here that if you hover over one of these velocity tabs, you could see that it's at 80%. Now, why they do that, I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know. Please let me know. But what I always do is, if I'm going to make my drums in the channel rack, I always, especially with the kicks and maybe the claps and snares, is I boost this up to 100%. So now you can see up in the top left, maybe I said right earlier, but in the top left, uh, you can see that these are at 100% now. And I always go and do this with the kicks and the 808s especially. Not every time do I do it to the hi-hats or to the claps or snares, but in this case, I will just to show you that that's the main difference between the channel rack and the playlist. There's a couple other differences that I wanna show you and they're really important in my opinion. But if we go ahead and just go to every one of these sounds, go to the piano roll and boost them up to 100%. Now let's put these patterns side by side. So I'm gonna take pattern one, I'm gonna drop it into the playlist and I'm gonna play these both of these patterns side by side and we could see if there's still a difference. Now I do still hear a slight difference, especially in that open hi-hat and a couple of the other sounds. It still sounds like it's a little bit louder in the playlist as these audio samples are being put in here. But as far as the kick and the claps go and, the, and those rim shots, they sound pretty much on point with the rest of them that are in the playlist. There's a lot of producers that you like to use their 808s and their kicks and claps and snares in the playlist. But as far as hi-hats go, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to do uh, some tricky hi-hats and little glitches and snare rolls in the channel rack and in piano roll than it is in the playlist. So if you have a really straightforward drum pattern like this, by all means, and you want it to hit harder, by all means, do it in the playlist, because uh, it's just really, you know, a t every two-step hi-hat, very simple pattern. But if you want it to get more complex and more original and a little bit more saucy with those hi-hats, definitely use the channel rack and definitely use the piano roll, because 
if you're in the piano right here and you want to do some really fast glitchy hi-hats it's going to be a lot more difficult in the playlist because in order to do velocity like this see how easy changing the velocity is like this in order to do that in the playlist you're going to have to do one or two things create an automation clip like this super time consuming you could do it but it's going to take you a lot more time a lot more time you know you can create that automation clip and if you wanted it to kind of go back and forth you could do so like that like i said it's a lot more time consuming you can do it it's all a personal preference honestly but if you wanted to get those really fast glitchy hi-hats i can show you so you you're going to want to change that grid to maybe one fourth And then you don't have any of these other options in the playlist either. So in uh, Channel Rack and Piano Roll, you have all these other options. You can note fine pitch, note filter cutoff frequency, resonance, release, velocity, pan. You can't really do all these as easy in the playlist as you can in the Channel Rack and the Piano Roll. So when it comes to hi-hats and especially like 808s, when you're creating your 808 patterns, you're going to want to use that Piano Roll. Unless you have a note that doesn't change the entire time and it's just a straight maybe C the entire time, you can use that in the playlist. Obviously, it'll just hit nice and hard the whole time, but if you want to do any note changes to follow your chord progressions and whatnot, channel rack and piano roll is the way to go, in my opinion. Just like the other way, you can do those fast hi-hat glitches. It's just going to take you a lot more time. I can show you how to do that in the playlist as well. We're going to have to change that grid. You can see it can be done in the playlist. It just takes a little bit more time. You have a little less options. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. That's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. And as always, share this with a friend if you get me.